video blog for the 27th of August of the year 2013 of our Lord, as they say. And um, this is the um, PM report. Hi, world. I think you just look at the camera. I usually look at the um, I look at the uh, little image of myself um, on the screen. But I guess if I want folks to see my eyes, I want me to be looking at this little camera gizmo. And uh, well, howdy, 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 howdy. Welcome to Chintamani Ashram, folks. Um, last night, I smoked uh, the first stewy by myself in a long time because of availability and other sort of other reasons. And I actually smoked half of that. I, I only smoked half a doobie. I, I didn't smoke a full doobie. I, I like to pace my medicine. When there's a lot of medicine, I like to smoke it all because it makes you feel better. Duh. <laughs> when there's a little medicine, I like to stretch it out so that I can feel better two days instead of one. Um, that's just my my way of smoking. Uh, so I gave the uh, the roach or the bowl, there's a bowl, bowl full, to um, Saint Death. Saint Death sounds weird in Spanish, but that's Santissima. Description of her to Lady Death there in her altar. Man, she's so sad in there. She doesn't have any flowers. She doesn't have any incense. I gotta figure it out. And I got uh, Lord Shiva on top of her, making sure that she doesn't get out of hand. In uh, Hindu terms, see, comparative religions. First of all, um, it is my belief, and I hope I'm not alone in this, that there's no such thing as mythology. There's pathology, and there's theology. And everything in between is a mixture of those two things. I don't like to be pathological, I would like to be theo theological which means that I'm actually giving thanks to death for not having taken me today or any of my loved ones. Lord Shiva, well, he's kind of like literally, I mean, the destroyer of the world, Lord Rudra, he comes out of the, uh, out of the um, third eye of Brahma to destroy the universe because Brahma and the, is upset at the fact that his first creations refuse to reproduce. <laughs> That's a weird trip. It's in the Kanto somewhere in the Bhagavatam. Um, I don't have a Bible with me. Usually when I smoke and, and, and share with you guys, I like to have a Bible class in honor of the uh, Rastafari and all those guys who I truly appreciate. Look guys, um, medicine. Let's talk about medicine. Before I smoke, let's talk about medicine. First of all, the ritualistic of medicine. We got the candle, as you know from the last um, time we talked, that's Lord Shiva. We have the incense for Lord Shiva. We're going to light that right now. Let's just light it. We're going to give, give thanks to Lord Shiva for letting us smoke tonight with him. You know, I use a lot of psychedelics lately. I've used a lot of psychedelics lately. And the, the point that keeps coming back to me is the sacredness of it. You do eight... I'm gonna put it to the uh, to the camera, but it's eight 
eight turns on the incense for Lord Shiva. Eight is a sacred number for some reason. It's the lotus petal. It's the it's a very sacred number, so you give thanks to Lord Shiva. So you, you can use psychedelics. You can use all the psychedelics you want. The medicine is not going to uh, hurt you. It's not going to harm you. It's a perfectly harmless little pipe, you know. Um, but when I smoke, and lately even when I eat, the sacred aspect of it, you know, the... Uh, and here's the scoop, you know. Um, for all you atheists and uh, amazing atheists out there, I guess. Um, even though you're atheists, you must recognize the sacred somewhere along the lines, you know? I'm not saying that you believe in a god or a gods or spirits or any of that. I'm just saying that if you walk down the woods and you see a butterfly and you see the sky and you see you know things as they should be you should be at least be able to be touched by that at some remote place in your being and recognize the beauty of it all because yes of course the uh, butterfly is eaten by a spider later on and you know the, the trampling of your feet destroys untold lives without you even knowing it. So, yes, there is a, a great horror to the sacred, but beyond the horror is the great beauty of it. You know, and that's what um, psychedelics are for. They're for you know, getting in touch with the truth of it. So, that's... Uh, 420 every day, 420 every hour. <laughs> Here's to you, uh, David Balmo and friends. Word about this bowl. I didn't say Om Namo Shivaya. Om Namo Shivaya. <sighs> Because this bowl is what you call Mahaprasad. Why Mahaprasad? This bowl was offered to Lady Death last night. She's already consumed it. I'm just consuming the remnants of it. It's the um, theory behind offering food and or drink or smokes even to a deity. the Muslim and the true Christian must see that as idolatry that they're truth to they're truthful to the religion on the other hand um, the sorcerer the um, psychon out they need not offer their food although the, the wise sorcerer will the wise sorcerer will see the sacredness of it and say, say you know what <coughs> this is not just for me this is for that which observes me and that which sees beyond me and enjoys beyond me so, um, eh, there's not a lot of weed. That's just a little bowlful, and it's already half smoked. It's kind of sad, isn't it? Um, I need a, you know, I need, I need like a, I have to, smoking from the pipe, it's an art. That's not a spoke about cigarettes for spike. The pipe, um, takes longer to light. 
And when you're lighting a pipe with a candle, you want to make damn sure you don't get wax on the bowl, so you have to tilt it without dropping the weed, obviously. And pull the flame, hoping that a little bit of the flame will be caught at the bottom, <sighs> creating heat. If you have enough weed, you can keep putting more on top, and the flame will keep going. <coughs> but if you don't, um, it'll get... It'll dry up quickly. I guess what I'm trying to tell you is it's better to have more weed than less weed. Is that it? <laughs> so, weed is about confession. In Vino Veritae, weed gets you pleasantly... vulnerable, mind-wise. So you can get rid of some of the uh, stress in your mind. Mm. Mm. When you love somebody, It is only natural that they can hurt you. The more you love somebody, the more you can hurt them, and they can hurt you. And the art of life, in my humble opinion, is not to hurt the folks you love. mother and I have a complex relationship. I don't think she appreciates some of my efforts, but that's normal for a son to feel that, and it may be erroneous on top. I have to give that clarity. On the other hand, Sometimes I see her and she looks at me with this adoration, this motherly adoration. It's the duality of the feelings. Sometimes the adoration, sometimes the abject terror had the creature I've become. And uh, the in-between of that is the truth. The other day we were out here in the hammock talking and she was upset with my sister. She was ranting on about my sister, and I said, Look, man, heaven and hell are here, right here, right here, right now. This is it. There's no more than this for heaven and hell. If the feelings are of anger, frustration, blah, 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 well, it is hell. And if it's the other thing, well, it's heaven. So, the trip is to go as deeply as possible in your own heart to find whether you're in heaven or you're in hell. Or like me, in the place in between. Neither heaven nor hell, but in between. Limbo, I guess you'd call it. When I smoke, I'm strongly criticized by my family. They don't appreciate my philosophical tenure or my aggressive behavior. I tend to get very thin skinned when I smoke.
something to do with having your feelings closer to the surface instead of hidden away in some place. But the result, you know, is that you scare the children. And that is why I prefer to smoke alone. Why I prefer to smoke in front of a camera. So as to not frighten the children. The Hashishim used weed as a weapon. Weaponized weed. <sighs> that is common down here. But why should a medicine be a weapon? Why should it not be a medicine of the soul? Because the need for weapons is there. If you have a dual personality, as I do, two sides to your own story, you see one side of the argument, you see the other side of the argument. You try to be somewhere in the middle. Heaven, hell, purgatory, or limbo. The middle way of the Buddhists, I guess you'd call it. Years ago, when I first came to Mexico, I was under the delusion that I needed to walk from Valle de Bravo to Santa Fe, New Mexico. Thing that I can do, by the way, I think that if I set my mind to doing it, it's not that much of a challenge. It's a challenge, but it's not that much of a challenge. But it was a delusion of mine, a delusion of feelings and. When is it God speaking to you, and when is it you speaking to you? And how do you determine which part of you is God, and which part of you is the devil? Limbo. Right? Well, the easy answer to that equation is, if it harms others, it's definitely devilish. If it helps others, or heals others, or propels others, it is on the other side. My friend Uli Lamel once told me, if you have multiple personalities, they have to work as a football team with one um, goalkeeper. It doesn't variate much from the the goal. That really struck a note with me. So the internet. History, time, the Bible, wars and rumors of wars, grids, information, exchanges, freedom, slavery. All these things weigh, weigh in in my heart. And none of these things weigh in my heart right now. Because they are, after all, attachments. Attachments. Terence McKenna prophesied the end of the world by uh, 2013 going on 2014 and we're still around and I, I kind of believed on uh, Terrence, old Terrence. There's a moment where I felt maybe he had gone a bit far, but there was a change. There was a definitely change. 
at some point. Um, and that change has to do with consciousness, the desire to do good or evil. It is inside of each one of us. It is not a individual event. Hmm. Go to sleep now, see? I never look much in the mirror when I do that, but my eyes shut. See with your eyes closed. Unsettling. <sighs> Good medicine, though. Let's save our weed. <laughs> Out of weed, guys. That was it. That was the weed. That was the bowl. Ladies and gentlemen, Avemus no bowl. Avemus empty bowl. Oh. Anybody here practice Zazen? Zazen? you with the empty mind bit. Just a brief meditation for you guys. Mm. Hope you guys get it. Good class. <laughs>